My friends, this week's video, 10 pages of typed notes. We are jumping into three supplements that you asked me to review to figure out if they're fact or if they're based on a little bit of fiction. So let's get going. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author and educator. And this channel is the health class you wish you had in high school where we educate and bust myths without any shame. So go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell if you're not already subscribed. I get new videos out every Friday. And I'm also having fun over on TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln all week long. So come follow me there. So as you know, I review a lot of products on my socials because there is just so much garbage out there targeted towards women and people who can get pregnant, have periods, have vaginas, the whole thing. I posted a question to my Instagram community where I said, let me know the products that are marketed to you that you want me to take a look at. Ooh, we got a lot. So I decided to focus on three brands today that are very similar in that all these companies sell powders or pills or supplements that are targeted to like balance your hormones, help with fertility, lots of claims. The three companies I'm reviewing today are Alani New, Strong and Sexy Fit, and Pink Stork. I am not here to make disparaging comments about the founders of these products or to dive into any hearsay or whatever, like origin stories of why they made these products. To me, it's not relevant. I'm here to break down the ingredients in their products, what data we have, or we don't have, and what my personal thoughts are about them. For all of these, I've got references that I'm putting in my show notes. And my friends, I spent hours diving into this and looking at references. So there's a lot, but if you're interested, that's where you wanna go. We're gonna jump right into Alani News Balance Capsules and Powder. There's lots of supplements from this company, but I'm gonna focus on those two. And I, I've got my notes. So here is their claim. Um, that it's a signature hormone balancing formula. Balance is strategically designed to support hormonal balance, weight management, complexion, and fertility. Enjoy restorative sleep, improved energy levels, and more. Like, who doesn't want that? I could use that. I also love, like, the Balance Powder Hawaiian Shaved Ice. Like, I, I would love to have some shaved ice. And you'll see there's, like, definitely, like, a Hawaiian tropical theme going throughout all of these. So I'm gonna break down the ingredients, which you can see here that's in their powder, and we're gonna go through them. What they are, what they claim, and what is the actual evidence? And before I jump in and review these actual products, I want you to understand that these are all supplements. They're not considered drugs, meaning that they are not regulated in the same way by the FDA as traditional medicines are. I also wanna say that I am not receiving any money from any pharmaceutical companies or anything like that, and I don't make money when I prescribe drugs. I'm a salaried person. Even if I wasn't, I have the ability to understand literature. I'm also not somebody who is anti-supplement because I went to a traditional medical school. I believe in evidence. And if something works, we just call it medicine. For example, penicillin. That was a mold. That's very natural. It works. We use it. I also believe in acupuncture for low back pain. I also believe in honey for coughs. Like we have data for this stuff. So it's not this or that and you're one or the other. We can have both together when we have evidence. So I'm not here to say that all supplements are bad. First up is myo inositol. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but regardless. They say um, that it promotes female fertility and restores insulin sensitivity. And that's it. That's like all they say. And if you're somebody who's struggling with fertility and trying to conceive, you are a vulnerable person, meaning that you want to get pregnant. And that is a very, very, primal feeling. And so these companies know that and they make products that they say can help get you there. You see that marketing you think, well, it has to be true, right? Let's first back up and just say that all of these products, none of them are regulated by the FDA. They are not held to the same standard as routine drugs. Doesn't mean that they might not test their products in their own labs and say, here's what's in it, but there's no overall review. Okay. So Here's the actual data on myno inositol. And I asked some of my fertility physician friends because they're the experts. And they were like, yeah, Jen, that's actually a supplement we're okay with in specific populations. Now, Alani New makes it sound like you use this powder and it helps with fertility for everybody. And that's actually not the case. The data suggests that it may help with fertility, with 
helping people ovulate or resume ovulation if that's their issue with not being able to conceive, if they have PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, and the type that is associated with increased testosterone or androgens. And keep in mind, that's not all people with PCOS. So what they're saying is, yes, this could work in a specific group of people who have PCOS and a specific type of PCOS. The theme you'll notice here, None of these companies spell that out. They just say, oh yeah, it's good for fertility. Go ahead and take it. So their messaging about this isn't, it's not necessarily harmful if you take it, but their messaging is misguided and it may delay treatment for people who actually need assisted reproductive technologies who are not getting it because they think this powder is going to help them. Okay, next up on the ingredient list, D-I-M, which stands for diendyl methane. That's why we're just gonna say D-I-M. And here's what they say. They say that estrogen metabolism prevents drastic increases or decreases in estrogen, which is kind of like not a complete sentence, um, prevents conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So this compound is, you know, is out and about there. And it's something that we find in cruciferous vegetables. So those are veggies like your broccoli, your cauliflower, things that are good for you. And so there's a lot out there about the claim that it's going to decrease your risk of cancer, it'll balance your estrogen, it'll decrease certain kinds of estrogens, it'll help with weight, like, you know. These supplements, like these compounds, they tend to be said that they work for one thing and then all of a sudden, they people are like, it's a wonder drug, take it for everything. So there's actually a lack of proof that they work for these indications. We have no idea what the dosage would be even if it does work. And it's not recommended if you're on hormonal birth control like the pill because it can mess up with the metabolism of the pill. They don't say anything about that on their product. Okay, next up ingredient list, ALA or alpha lipoic acid. They say that combined with myo inositol, it's been shown to increase insulin sensitivity in women who are overweight or have PCOS. So they're being a little more specific there, that's good. And it's true, it's an antioxidant that can help with glucose metabolism. But we're still waiting on really good data, but it's probably not harmful, so okay. Next up, chromium. They say that this has been shown to improve blood sugar control and decrease weight gain and fat deposition in the midsection. Very specific. You would think with recommendations like this, it would be very clear. So there is some data that it could help with glucose metabolism, but the data is conflicting and it's probably only in people who have diabetes. Again, they don't say that. And there is currently no data to support it as a long-term solution for weight loss or weight control. And I find that really ugh, because you know that people who are trying to lose weight or in a very vulnerable spot, just like people who are struggling with infertility. So here you are preying on that. You slap it on the label and you're gonna get people who buy your product just for that and you're selling them false hope. And the exact dosage, no idea, it's unclear. Do you see a theme here? Oh, and don't forget this about chromium. It can increase the risk of kidney or liver damage and it can interact with other medications like ibuprofen or certain types of blood pressure medications. That's not on the bottle. So that could actually cause harm. The last ingredient I'm going to review in the Alani New Balance powder is folate. And we hear about folate and folic acid all the time. They say that it has a positive action in cardiovascular, neural, and psycho-emotional health, like everything. Some people take this product to, get, to become fertile and it helps to support fetal development. Okay, yes, folate, folic acid, we absolutely recommend it when you're trying to conceive and when you're pregnant because it decreases the risk of certain birth defects called neural tube defects. These are like birth defects in the brain and the spine. We know that when you take the right dosage when trying to conceive and in pregnancy, it decreases the risk of these defects by about 60%, so that's amazing. And could it help with fertility, like trying to conceive? Maybe but not in a very evidence-based way, like you need to take this in order to get pregnant. But it's probably not harmful. And if you're not on any birth control or trying to conceive, yes, you should take it. So I do wanna show you this part on their website that I found, which was, I agree with, but wasn't anywhere on the bottles, like not easy to find. Will balance increase my fertility or make me more fertile? Because you can bet that a lot of people are searching for this and this is coming up in groups and they're like, oh yeah, I need this product to get pregnant. They do say that it won't make an individual quote unquote more fertile, but it helps to bring a woman's hormone level to a stage of equilibrium. I don't know what that means. It's not a fertility supplement, but it has helped many people get pregnant when there are hormonal issues. That is so conflicting. The reason they're being very clear is because they know if they make a claim, that could get them in trouble with the FDA. And none of these statements have been evaluated by the FDA for accuracy because they're supplements and not drugs. They then say for a person with no fertility issues before starting balance, this would have virtually no effect. So they're, I think they're just trying to cover themselves there. So let's talk about the cost because this is super fun. So this powder is $50 a month. So that would run you $600 a year, $600. And the same as the price for the capsules. Hold on. 
So out of here, like, what do I think is decent and good? Probably the folate and the myo inositol. If you have PCOS, the kind associated with increased testosterone. Here's the thing. You don't need to spend $600 a year. I've done the calculations for you. You could go online and find just the myo inositol for about $15 to $20 a month, and you could get almost a year's worth of folate for $5 on Amazon. So you could spend total for both of those $245 as opposed to the $600 for this product and get what I personally believe is actually the good stuff out of this product. That's saving a lot of money. Think of all the fun things you could do with that money. There's no references, that's a con. There's actually no references on any of these supplement websites, which is so fun because you'd think if you're research-based, I've found lots of references. Why do you think they're not there? Because either they didn't look for them or they don't say what they wanted to say. So in conclusion, this product is probably not harmful, although it might be if you're taking certain medications. Um, the marketing is misleading. It's expensive. There's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't have great data. If you're on birth control, I don't think you should be using this product. And overall, other than the fact that it might taste like shaved ice, I don't really see a whole lot of benefits for it. So for this reason, I say pass. Oh, this is so much work, you have no idea. See, it's a lot more fun to just buy the products than to spend hours looking into them. Okay, let's be real. All right, the second product, Strong and Sexy Fit Goddess Hormone Support Formula. Because we all wanna be goddesses, right? Okay, so here's the claim for this goddess formula. They sell lots of different ones, but this specific one is the one that we're reviewing today. They say, <laughs> okay, I gotta stop. A one-stop formula for a lot of problems you may have or may not even know you have. That is some good marketing. They're like, we're gonna fix the problems you have and the ones you don't even know you have. Don't even know. Like open up the wallets. Like, I'm sorry, but that's, that's great. So they say that they wanna help the female body find a level of homeostasis. That's what a lot of these products claim. When experiencing issues due to PMS, menopause, hot flashes, thyroid issues, skin conditions, fertility, lack of energy, and more. I think the end more is the problems you don't know you have. They, they say it is the most scientifically backed and researched formula based off of the most current clinical research to date. Yet they have no references on their website to back that up. Mm, red flag. Your body is a temple. I agree. And you can assure that goddess is the answer to keep it that way. I disagree. So they, and yeah, they say PCOS, acne, weight issues, motivation, mood swings, sleep, troubles with depression, anxiety, goddess is here to help. So this is another one of those, like if you're seeing the theme, like goes back to like, you know, like in the thirties and forties when people were peddling like snake oil, like these fake things, these tonics. Now it's just got a different name, but anyhow. Okay, let's go down the ingredients list, shall we? So myo -nositol, I'm not gonna dive into it a whole lot because we reviewed it with our last powder, but I do wanna say what they claim it does. Regulates the menstrual cycle, promotes healthy ovulation, may improve mood, may improve fertility and those affected by PCOS. Great for heart health and mood. So I do like that they specifically call it PCOS. Maybe not as much as I would like to in the specific subtype, but that's okay. At least it was better than the other one. When it comes to them mentioning mood, the data shows that it might help for mood, but it's not, it should not be used as a standalone treatment for legit mood disorders. Um, and heart health, maybe. Again, probably not harmful. So, um, so I'm not mad about that. Let me turn the page. There we go. Okay. Then they have D-chiro uh, which is which is related to myo-inositol. Here they say that it helps treats PCOS, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, reduces blood pressure, fights free radicals in the body. Free radicals are associated with um, cancers. All of the studies that I could find about this specific supplement were really tiny, like less than 100 people. So it's probably not harmful, but we don't have a ton of data yet. I'm not really mad about that ingredient though. DIM, we talked about this before too. They say that it improves weight loss. We've already talked about that. They then say it reduces acne caused by hormonal imbalances and helps estrogen metabolism. So it could be true that it might actually help with some hormonal acne because DIM binds to testosterone receptors and then the testosterone can't bind, have the effect and cause that you know oily acne. So it could be true. And I have seen some dermatologists say that it could potentially help but if you're not seeing it help, then you might need other acne treatments. Is it harmful for that? Probably not. And again, regarding weight loss, there's no data yet that it's proven for sustained weight loss in humans. So another false claim and about weight, which as you know, is one that I'm kind of sensitive about because that's just not nice to make those claims without really good data. Okay, biotin. This is like a cure-all, dermatologists know this. Um, they say that it greatly improves the health of your hair, skin, and nails. It can regulate blood sugar. It can boost your ability to convert food into energy. 
there's actually not that much great evidence. Um, and there's actually some evidence that biotin could cause some harm. It doesn't affect blood sugar on its own. From what I found, it actually works better with chromium, which this product doesn't have, but the Alani New did. So again, it's like a hodgepodge of what people decided to put in their things. And having a deficiency of biotin is really rare. It's like your, it's like your eyebrows and like your, like your eyelashes are falling out. So you probably don't need this. Again, harmful, probably not, but it's not a cure all like people think it is. Oh, this is my, this is one that makes me angry. N-acetylcysteine. They say it greatly detoxifies the kidney and the liver. It helps the body produce antioxidants and it improves mental health function. Guys, anytime you see the word detox in a product, your spidey senses should go up because there's so much garbage out there when it comes to detoxes. So N-acetylcysteine, when I saw that, I was like, oh, I know what that is for. We use that in the emergency room when people come in after overdosing on Tylenol and they're harming their liver. Like that's a real detox that you need if you've swallowed a bottle of acetaminophen. You don't need <laughs> to help your kidney or your liver detox because literally that's their whole function. They are detoxing your blood for you. They don't need help. So unless you're like in an emergency room, like you've got a legit medical problem, you don't need this. There's also no proof that it prevents cancer because they claimed it has antioxidant effects. It can actually cause some really nasty GI side effects. And it's actually been shown to accelerate the progression of some cancers. So it's like doing the opposite of what they claim. And the data on mental health is mixed. Um, so no, I don't want you taking this. I, this is not an ingredient I'm a huge fan of in this product. We're getting there, don't worry. Okay, folate, another one that we talked about before in the Alani New. Here they say that it helps to regulate cellular functions, may reduce birth defects. Absolutely, that's true. Improves the, the way the body breaks down carbohydrates and thus improving your energy levels. So, um, Regarding that last part about the carbohydrate metabolism, there was one large review that looked at 18 trials that included about 21,000 people. And the changes in carbohydrate metabolism were actually very tiny and um, more data is needed. So for that reason, I wouldn't take folate. And what they say, I don't think is the right reason to take it, but regardless, that's a tiny point. Oh, this is my other favorite one. Calcium d glucarate they say that it helps to detoxify the body and remove carcinogens from environmental factors and a poor diet. The processed food that we eat causes the release of many toxins in the body. This helps to remove them. Here's what I have on my notes. Can you see it? This is gibberish. This is gibberish. This is total gibberish. Um, again, you don't need detoxes and all those things. Now, people will sell you every detox supplement under the sun because that's where we are in life and, and what, we, what we tend to fall for. Uh, that's just gibberish. You don't need it. Chased berry. Oh, I see chased berry everywhere. They say that it may help with acne, increases your progesterone levels, relieves PMS symptoms, helps to stimulate the pituitary gland, stimulates milk production in new mothers, reduces, relieves bloating, helps reduce mood swing severity, helps with hot flashes. It like does everything. Um, so it's true. Chase berry may help with PMS symptoms like breast tenderness. It may help with fertility, but it actually may hinder it in other people. So this is one that I've actually seen fertility doctors um, really dislike because it can actually have quite an effect on the ovaries. Um, I know from some that have said that they've had to cancel certain cycles because of people taking chase berry, messed up hormone levels. So that's not a great reason to take it without talking to your fertility specialist first. So it may actually, chase berry has actually been shown to potentially worsen some hormone sensitive cancers and it may make your birth control less effective. Okay, that's all the ingredients in the goddess formula. What I do appreciate about this formula, on the bottle they do say that you should talk to your healthcare provider first if you're on birth control before taking this product because of the change in efficacy. I appreciate that. That's like all I appreciate though. There's a lot of ingredients in this product, a lot. And like the N-acetylcysteine, um, there's just some in here that I would not recommend. There's a lot of these claims, these detox claims, like those are red flags um, that are not supported by good science or good data. So from here, like what is good? The inositols, the folate, maybe the DIM for hormonal acne, but like that's about it. My favorite part, let's look at the cost. So it's $46 a month or $552 a year. That is some change. You could get a four month supply of DIM for $18. And if you wanted to add in the inositols and the folate separately, that would run you $317 a year. So um, this is again, a product that is expensive, has a lot of stuff in it that you really don't need. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. And you can be a goddess without a goddess powder. The final product that I will be reviewing today is the Pink Stork Fertility Drink Mix. Now there are a lot of Pink Stork products. 
There are drinks, there are teas, there are gummies, there are pills, there's a lot of this stuff. But I decided to focus just on one, um, and so I decided to focus on the drink mix. Here's what their claims are. Um, so they do, they do have a product that is a birth control cleanse, um, and I just want you to know you do not need a cleanse. And yes, you can watch this video up here where I talk about that in more detail. Again, your red flag should already be going up. Any company that's selling you a birth control cleanse is a company you should not be buying products from because this is not based in data. Okay, but claims about this specific drink. Supports ovulation, conception, and hormone balance. It's clean, which, what is clean? I don't know. Sometimes I joke and I'm like, I only want filthy products. Um, but clean is, a, is definitely a hijacked, unregulated term. And it's woman owned. And I hate when people lean on this because when a product is woman owned, I have even higher standards for it because that woman should know how these products make women feel. So this is not a plus for me. This is actually a real downside because we know that the fertility community, recurrent pregnancy loss, miscarriage community, this is a community that has a lot to struggle with. And it's really, there's a lot of garbage out there to weed through because this is a community that companies know that they can make products for and people will buy them. So I find it especially heinous when women make products like this. That's my personal opinion. You can disagree with me. Um, okay, so we're just gonna jump through some of the ingredients here because it's fun and I'm just having so much fun going through all of these. Selenium, they say it supports the health of follicular fluid in women's eggs. Maybe, that may actually be true but the data is sparse and there's not enough to make this sort of definitive. This supports it and you need it. Um, we're, far, we're far from being able to say that. Is it harmful? Probably not. Grapeseed, they say that it supports hormones and inflammation relief. Um, it's true that grapeseed extract does have an antioxidant effect, but I couldn't find anything about supporting hormones or recommended doses. So again, this is sort of experimental at best. Chromium. Um, they say it supports your natural ovulation cycle and estrogen production. Yes, maybe in people with PCOS, but not everyone. Of course, they don't say that. This one, this one bothers me. Vitamin B6. And you think, whatever, John, it's just vitamin B6. So their claims are that it supports balanced hormones. Again, what does that mean? And increases progesterone levels. It helps to strengthen uterine lining and support progesterone production. Here's what I want to show you. This is the dose of the vitamin B6 that is in this product. And this is the dose of the vitamin B6 dose that's recommended. Their dose is more than two times the recommended amount, and I don't understand why. Even in other papers that were talking about using vitamin B6 to support these fertility claims, we're using a far lower dose. So I don't understand why their dose is so high. You're peeing it out and you're just paying for it, but taking such a high dose of vitamins, and look at all the doses you see here on their, on their label. These are astronomically high. Just because something's natural doesn't mean it's not going to harm you if you take it at really high doses. So that really worries me. Cranberry extract, um, we haven't seen that in any of the other products. They say that it supports healthy egg and the production of healthy cervical mucus. Contains antioxidants, supports your natural fertility. True, cranberry extract, yes, it absolutely has antioxidants. We don't have a known standard dose for fertility. So again, we're taking what we know is, is a possible benefit and we are now extrapolating it and making it sound like it can work for this and we know it and this is the dose and we don't. Inositol, here too. Again, they don't mention that it's just for people with PCOS. It's not for everyone. Are you seeing the theme? And bamboo. I don't know why this product has bamboo in it. They don't say why it's in here. And when you look up bamboo, in relation to fertility, I could find a study that showed that it actually harmed fertility in male rats. It screwed up their sperm. I don't understand why it's in this product. You can look in like the hypothetical literature of, you know, for centuries it's been used for certain things, but we don't have actual data. And again, you gotta be really careful about what you're putting in your body when you're trying to conceive, especially if you're dealing with fertility issues. So I don't know why this is in here. So the good thing in here, in this, in this pink stork fertility drink mix, the inositols. The bad thing? That vitamin B6 dose is super high. And why do you have bamboo in it? Lots of other ingredients with weak data. Their marketing is not great. How they present things is not the whole story. The cost is $30 if you do subscribe and save. So that comes out to about $360 a year, which is less than what our other friends have been, but that's still a significant amount of money. Now, I will say they do have one good product here that I think is good, the Myo, Myo Cairo, which is the inositols, and it's in a dose that is what we tend to accept as the, you know, the recommended dose. But I suggest that you don't buy it from this company because when you buy products from companies that put out this kind of stuff, you're supporting them and saying, yeah, even though your marketing is terrible 
and you make these claims that aren't true and you have super high doses of other vitamins and you sell birth control cleanses, when you buy other stuff, you're supporting them. So you can easily get the, that product, the Myo Cairo combo in a different, from a different company off of another website that doesn't do this sort of thing. Okay, that was a lot. And I went through it ingredient by ingredient because that's what you should do too if you're buying a supplement or a product. You need to know what you're putting into your body. And I am not here to say all supplements are bad. I've, I've given you the data and I've showed you which ones I think are fine and which ones are actually harmful. It's not all or none. These companies are out there. They're selling you something. They're making money. Their marketing is a bit sketchy. And that makes me really angry because they are picking on a group of people, women, people who are trying to get pregnant, struggling with fertility, struggling with weight, struggling with depression, and they're selling you snake oil. I don't recommend any of these products. You are more than welcome to drop comments and thoughts below. Remember, I'm not paid by anybody. These are my personal thoughts. I spent a bunch of hours looking this up on my own time, and I'm here to educate and empower you because when you can see through the snake oil and you can see through the marketing, then you can really get to the bottom line of what you need. And if you're wondering, well, Jen, what do I need? Not much. That's why, it, but that's not that fun. People can't make money off of it. Okay, drop your comments and questions below. <sighs> I'm gonna go take a break. And uh, happy shopping for things that are fun. Like think of all the stuff you could use that money for. <laughs>